You know what my fear in life is? Yep, that near-death experiences are not true. They're that bullshit. I have, I have heard some most encouraging near-death near experiences about the love of Jesus Christ. The love of God. The love of Jesus Christ. But yet, I have heard some near-death experiences that are contradictory. That they're not that they're they do not believe in this unconditional love of Jesus Christ. Which ones are true? You can't just you can't just take the loving ones like Howard Storms and discard the rest of them just because they're not loving. You can't just use that argument, oh, if it's not loving, it's not of God. Because quite frankly, when you read that Bible, you got a God who is loving, but a God who is wrathful too. Some would say vengeful, ven uh, angry. Even a God of hate. A God of love and a God of hate. So you got to take all these, you got to arrive at the truth, you got to take all the near death experiences and compare them together to get the truth, if that be possible. For all, you, for all, for all I know, near death experiences, all of them are false. For all I know, But I, I, I came across this near-death experiences, near-death experience by Howard Pittman, called This Passion Was Rejected by God. And it makes sense. In it, he says, I'll play the video clips. In it, he says, when he pled to God to spare his life, he had his first supernatural encounter. A lovely voice, the loveliest voice you ever heard. Nothing could be lovelier. The very tone of this voice said that it was God Himself speaking. Notice he did, he uh, this voice did not say I am God. Howard Pittman assumed knew quote unquote it was God, but the voice told him to stop breathing, peace, rest, no more pain, and he did. He suddenly realized that. He had been played to God to spare his life, and he, he screams out, No, if I don't breathe, I'll die. You're not God. And he realized that the voice that was speaking to him so sweetly was the devil. And then he, and then, and then. So the moral of the story, and all these near-death experiences where everybody just knows it's Jesus. He never said, the, the light never ever identifies himself first, saying, I am Jesus. I am he that was dead and resurrected and am eternal. Everybody, even even the Howard Storms, just, they, they just quote unquote know it's Jesus. And yet, if you look in, in that Bible, that's, that Jesus never does that. When he when he appeared when he appeared to Paul when he appeared to John on the Isle of Patmos he always identified himself first. He never 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 ever 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 just lets the person having the experience identify him themselves. He identifies himself first. So my greatest fear is especially since I renounced Jesus and he's not taking me back. And sometimes I feel warm feelings of light and love. But my greatest fear is that I'm going to get die. And Jesus, quote unquote, is going to tell me, I forgive you. I, I, I know something's not right. But eventually he'll convince me here, everything's fine. He'll take me to heaven. And I'll be living. And, I, and just about the time I my Finally, I'm reassured that I'm going to be here forever and ever in this happiness and eternal bliss. All of a sudden, everything's going to turn fire, and I'm going to realize that was not Jesus. That was the devil. And, I hit, and now I'm going to be dragged off to hell to burn forever. I 
Howard Pittman said when God spoke to him, it was not in a sweet voice, musical tones. As how storms said Jesus spoke to the angels in musical tones. It was, oh, you could take all the noise of volcanoes, thunder, hurricanes, tornadoes, rapping all in one. It would not mimic what he heard when God spoke to him in his wrath. And talking about the all of an unconditional love in God, how Pittman, when he truly met God, he said, totally of his wrath, knocked me to my face and zapped every ounce of strength out of me. And then my God proceeded to tell me who I was, who I thought I was. All these near-death experiences would, quote unquote, Jesus, unconditionally accepts and loves them. And does not condemn them for the wrong things they do. Yet Howard Pittman, when he got past the, the fake counterfeit Jesus, God tells him, your faith is dead. Your works are in vain. The life you lived in the Christian service to me, I rejected as an abomination in the Pharisee. What made you think I would take that from a Laodicean Christian as you? I play, I play the, so as much as I want to, I cannot believe in the Jesus of unconditional love that I see in so many near-death experiences. Something just, something's buzzing in me. Something just tells me. So I got this notion that this just, this is not the true Jesus. And unfortunately, since I renounced t t Jesus in the past, against his plea, the Spirit's plea to not do so, he won't take me back. He will not forgive me. He then we slide further and further in their unbelief and anger. Yes, I freely admit to being harboring resentment and anger against God from, from let me get fat. From, uh, for even though I barely eat now for not let me give the good looking guy my arms being so short for me looking ugly I admit the harboring even hatred sometimes towards God for that when he let King David and King Solomon satisfy their lust and never condemned them for, for it for the, for the multiple wives against the, against his own command in Deuteronomy 1717 that the king was not supposed to have multiplicity of wives. Yet he oh, forget. But the moral of the story is if you have a near death experience, you better know the voice that speaks to you. As you're going to meet a Jesus of unconditional love, who loves you unconditionally. And you're going to be taken into the portals of heaven. And you're going to see loved ones. Angels. Beautiful things that are going to make you cry. Even though you might have been an atheist on earth. And you're going to settle in thinking, is, and, and I'm going to... Is, is, I'm gonna be here forever and ever, and no, and and you and you just gonna know it's going only gonna get better and better and better, never stop getting better forever and ever. Just just after you realize this, suddenly everything's gonna explode in the fire, and you're gonna find yourself in the pits of hell. And then you're gonna meet the real God. He's gonna say, "I am God." I am this, I am God. You are an abomination to me. Your sins. And this is why I think that. Never play this near death this, this, you, I'm, I've taken all the near death experiences together and put them all together and come to this conclusion. So let me play. Play it for you. Okay. And I 
cried to God. In a very short and pointed prayer, I turned my face to the wall, and I asked God to extend my life. After all, I'd been his servant for 30 years. Immediately upon conclusion of that short prayer, I had my first ever supernatural. Listen. For out of that vast darkness, a voice spoke to me. A supernatural, audible voice. But what a voice. Listen. No human ear had ever heard this sound. Oh, how beautiful. How lovely. How totally captivating. The very tone of that voice testified the speaker was God. As the voice said to me, God. Listen. Don't breathe. Jesus once loved me. No. But no more. Pain. Peace, rest, security, all that you have ever wanted. Just don't breathe. Well, for over 30 years I had professed to serve God. You can imagine what I'm going to do. My very best to obey. As I began my efforts to shut down my struggle to breathe, pow, like a bolt of lightning. Listen. As though I screamed as loud as I could and my spirit as a realization hit me. No, oh no, what am I doing? I just asked God to extend my life. I don't breathe, I'm going to die. You're not God. Listen. With that exclamation, Satan fled from me. There beyond the veil of tears in the valley of death, at the door, he had lied to me. He told me he was God. He couldn't kill me. He had to get me to kill myself by lowering my will to live. You better know the spirit that speaks to you. Your life could depend on it. You think not? Let me tell you something. And this, this, and this. All the rabbit feet you on rug. This is God's voice. God said. I was allowed to plead my case, standing outside the gates of heaven. When it was over, God spoke to me in an audible voice. Listen! It wasn't a sweet voice. It wasn't lovely. It wasn't desirable. It wasn't anything like the voice the devil had used. You could take the noise of all the storms, the roars of all the oceans, the volcanoes, the tornadoes, roll them all up into one, and they wouldn't mimic what I heard. When the thunderous voice of the living God came down over those gates before his words hits me, reached me, the, the tone of his wrath knocked me on my face and zapped every ounce of strength in my being. And then my God proceeded to tell me who I was, not who I thought I was. Those two people were not even kin. Quote, your faith is dead. Your works are in vain. The life that you lived and offered to me as a life of Christian service, I rejected that as an abomination in the Pharisee. What made you think I would take that from a Laodicean type Christian? In fact, untold millions are living the same life that you so lived, and they stand in danger of my everlasting wrath. So much for the, Unquote, the living God. So much for the unconditional love of Jesus. And they stand in danger of my everlasting wrath. There's a ray of hope that Jesus still loves, is loving. Listen to this. It took me away, let me regain my coat. Brought me back, let me plead till I exhausted my vocabulary. Suddenly the scales fell from my eyes. I saw what it was they wanted to see. I was pleading for the wrong life. I was pleading for a life that came from dirt and it was going back to dirt the least of my possessions, but housed was in was an immortal life, a life that would never end, and that's the life that was precious to him. Suddenly as those scales Listen. fell off, I saw him, and my mind for who he is, hmm. my real father, my very best friend, Listen. the creator of all of this, he hurt for me, the least and most insignificant of his entire kingdom, and, and he, he hurt, hurt for, me. for me, now nothing else he matters, hurt but my me. father and his will. I love that. I love that. Angry.
angry, wrathful, fiery, eternally damning God in pain for me. In pain, hurting for me. Maybe there is some fucking hope. But then there, there brings another problem. When they disproving so many of those Old Testament stories. How do I know it's not all, how do I know Jesus is even real to begin with? Jesus, I ask you, if you're really real, as I believed you, will you please let me know how, will you please let me know how you, if you're really real and how you are real? Jesus, will you, Jesus, will you please let me know if you're really real? And Jesus Christ, can I please have back what I had with you? Is there any way, why, why is this part that can't, Want it? Am I truly hopeless? If I am truly hopeless, then God, please give me my good looks and longer arms and looking young. But please don't let me be hopeless. But if I am, I demand my dreams. But if I'm not, if possible, Jesus Christ, please don't cast me out. He once told me, so lovingly, you're not getting rid of me. <laughs> Jesus, I curse, I curse this body I have. I curse, I curse how old I look. I curse this hair, or like, I, I curse this. I curse it, Jesus. I curse, if I, if I am truly hopeless, give me my goddamn hair back and my good looks. And let me look in my 20s. And give me my goddamn long arms. If you're not going to take me back. And damn me. Infinitely more. I demand it. But if, if there's any way possible. Jesus Christ with you. I said with you. Because I can't get it back. I, can do, I can't do what I had to do. If there's any way possible, Jesus Christ, can I please, can I please, Jesus Christ, have back what I had with you? Can I please have it back? If possible, can I please have it back? And is there any way also, any way I can, like Solomon and David, have my dreams for a season? Even if I can't, I, can I please have you back, Jesus Christ? Can I please have you back? You know... All I, need, all I need to do if I want to kill myself and find out what the fuck is going on with me spiritually is open this bottle of Trazodone sleeping pills and swallow every one of them, every goddamn one of them, one of them with this fucking cup of coffee. And I can die tonight and find the fuck out what the fuck's going on. I curse my body. I curse my look. I curse my middle aged look. <laughs> God, I do that for you and honor you for how ugly I look.